expert, but I'm pretty sure what you're supposed to do is take small breaks in between long periods of lesson planning. However, what I'm actually doing is taking small bits of lesson planning in between really long breaks. Welcome back to my channel guys. I am so excited for today's video because this has been my number one requested topic for a video and that is how do I lesson plan. So in today's video I'm going to take you guys through my planning binder. I'm going to show you what I keep in there, how I organize it, and then I'm going to show you how I lesson plan for the next week from beginning to end. A couple of things before I get started that I just wanted to throw out there. There is not one way to lesson plan. You've got to figure out what works for you, what works for your classroom, and what works for your school because your administration may have a specific way they want you to lesson plan. Also, if you have started lesson planning one way at the beginning of the school year and you realize it's not working for you, don't be afraid to change it. Guys, I have changed my lesson planning probably about 10 times from when I started teaching because the way that I was doing it just was not efficient. It didn't work for me and it's taken me three years to really figure out how do I need to lesson plan to work best for me. Just for reference, it is currently Sunday, January the 8th and it's about 3.30 in the afternoon. The reason I'm getting such a late start is I stayed up last night until 5 a.m. working on my lesson plan binder, getting it ready to post in my store. Horrible idea, by the way. I didn't fall asleep until after 6 a.m. and as a result, I slept in until afternoon. So I am just now sitting down to be able to lesson plan. Typically, I like to lesson plan on Saturdays so that I have Sunday free to be able to clean, to be able to get videos filmed, to be able to get TPT products up or whatever I need to get done. So this week, it's a little bit different because I knew I wanted to film and I couldn't do that until Sunday. But typically, Saturday is my lesson plan day. Now, I would be a great teacher if I could say that when I left Friday afternoon, I had all of my plans done for the next week. That, however, is just not how I operate. I would love to get there someday. That is a goal of mine. I think it would make my weekends a lot less stressful and it would just make me an overall happier person. However, right now, I'm just not there yet. Because I spend so much time making products for TPT and filming, I don't really have time throughout the week to be able to lesson plan. I like to be able to sit down and get it all done in one day because it just helps me stay focused and it helps me to make sure that I'm getting everything done because I feel like when I do it in little chunks here or there, I end up forgetting something. Because I waited until Sunday, it actually ended up benefiting me. 10 minutes ago, before I sat down to film, I got a call from our Board of Ed saying, school is canceled tomorrow. I am so stinking excited. We got about 10 inches of snow on Saturday, and with where I live, we are not equipped for snow whatsoever. We barely have any snow plows. So I kind of had a feeling that we were going to be off on Monday, but I wanted to make sure that I got the call and I knew for sure that we were off. Now that I know, it means that I don't have to lesson plan for Monday. Had I lesson planned on Friday and been ready for the whole week, it would have somewhat thrown me off. I don't really like that. So I'm actually kind of happy that I waited. Now, there is still a chance that Tuesday we will either be off or have a delay, so I could still end up getting thrown off, but that's okay. I will deal with it. So this is what it currently looks like outside. We got about 10 inches of snow, and it's been about 24 hours since it stopped snowing. Now, it is Sunday, and it's super, super cold out. I think it's a high of like 24 degrees, so none None of it is going to melt. You can see they did plow the roads in our apartment, but it is still covered in snow. It's still covered in ice. So we are definitely off on Monday and I'm hoping maybe we'll be off on Tuesday too. I know some teachers don't like snow days because it eats into their summer, but I personally love snow days. I say bring them on. The first thing I'm going to show you guys is my lesson plan binder. This is a brand new product in my store. I just finished it last night actually. I've been using some of the planning pages for myself the past couple weeks, but I just now got it all together as a product so it is up in my store what I'm gonna do is I'm going to discount it the first person to buy it will get it for 50% off after that it'll go up by another dollar until it gets back to full price I know it's a little bit more expensive it is $12 however if you consider how expensive lesson planning books are like an Erin Condren planner or other planners that you can find those run 50 60 70 dollars so in all honesty $12 is not so bad when you compare it Plus, I have put hours and hours and hours of work into this. It has been a huge labor of love. 
I'm putting it out there because it's something that really works for me, really helps me stay organized. And if that helps someone else out there, please go out, buy it. I hope that you find it useful. If not, don't feel the pressure to buy it. Please only get it if you really think that this is going to work for you. I do believe in it. I do think it's a great product. There are over 300 pages in it. It is completely editable and I feel like I included almost everything I could possibly think of. So if you get it, please give me feedback. Tell me what you guys think of it. Is it helping you? What would you like to see added? I'm always looking to make improvements. Here's kind of how I started lesson planning. My first year, I had a really crappy $1 lesson plan book from Target Dollar Spot. Hated it. Didn't have enough in it. It wasn't working for me. It wasn't efficient. Got rid of that. Then I developed like a spreadsheet online that I was not online, but on PowerPoint that I was using. It was okay. It worked better than the plan book I had at first, but it still did not work for me. Then my second year, I developed these other just like lesson planning sheets, still did not love them. This year, I got an Erin Condren planner, liked it at first, um, but the more I started using it, the more I realized that I had to supplement with other pages and it just didn't fit all of my needs perfectly. That is why I have developed this lesson plan binder and so far I am absolutely in love with it because it just fit all of my needs perfectly. That's the great thing about creating your own products is you can make sure that it fits your needs to a T. That being said, in this binder, I have included other pages that I don't personally use, but I put in there just in case you find them helpful and you want to use them. This binder is 100% editable. If you choose to purchase my product, you will get two different parts. You will get a PDF document that has pages that you are able to print out and use to handwrite your lesson plans if that's what you prefer. I also have an editable PowerPoint document. You are able to edit all the text, all the headings, all the titles, every single part of it, you are able to edit. Now, the backgrounds, like the templates, are not editable. However, I have included like a blank page with just the title so you can create your own own, no matter what, you are able to make pages that will fit your needs. However, I included as many different possibilities as I could possibly think of. So I can almost guarantee you guys that it will have everything you need. Towards the end of this video, I'm going to show you inside the product. So you're going to see every single thing that's in there before you buy it. That way you can make a decision. Because I just finished creating this last night, my binder is not like 100% complete. Some of the stuff that I need to add to it is at school. So I'm going to have to get that done like this next week. But it's a good start for me. I earlier just completely took everything out of my binder because it was not matching it was not very organized things were just thrown in there and it was not working hence why it had been sitting in my bedroom for the past like month because I wasn't even using it so I have completely overhauled my binder and I am so excited to lesson plan which almost never happens I normally dread lesson planning but now with this binder I'm seriously excited to be able to lesson plan just because it's so organized it all matches and it just makes my OCD teacher heart so much happier before I show you the inside of the binder I am going to tell you a couple things that are my absolute musts before I start lesson planning number one I absolutely have to have a cup of coffee no if ands or buts number two have to be in comfy clothes that's partially why I don't lesson plan throughout the weeks I like to be able to be at home on my couch with my Netflix, with my music, whatever, and I like to be comfortable. So my preference is just a plain t-shirt, athletic pants, and I'm ready to go. I know I made those sound a lot more serious than they actually were, but those are my two must-haves before I start lesson planning. I've got my coffee, I've got my comfy clothes, I'm ready to get started. I'm gonna show you guys inside my lesson plan binder, then I'm gonna go ahead and get started lesson planning. I'm gonna warn you in advance, it's probably gonna take me all day because I'm filming. It doesn't normally take me that long, but you guys will notice the sun is gonna set, the lighting's gonna get horrible. I apologize, but I was not getting up early this morning to be able to film this when the sun was up because I was up until 6 a.m. It was just not happening. So I apologize, but you guys are gonna get to see how I lesson plan from the very beginning until the end. I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to give me feedback. Tell me if you do something different or you have an idea to help me be more efficient, please leave it down in the comments. I would really appreciate it. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the inside of my lesson plan binder. So this cover page is included, it is editable. So you're able to put your own name at the top or if you wanna just have it say lesson planning binder, I have that as an option as well. There are also binder spines. So I have a half inch one, a one inch, which is currently on the side of this, a one and a half inch binder spine, and a three inch binder spine. I do recommend printing those on cardstock and laminating them just to make it easier when you insert. 
All right, now I'm gonna show you inside of the binder. So I do have these different section cover pages. I have a bunch of different ones included, but I also have an editable one. So you can change all of this information and you can put your own clip art in if I did not provide you with one that you need. Now, these tabs are from Walmart. I think they were the Avery brand. So in order to attach the cover page to it, I just use plain paper clips and it's worked really well for me. There's probably a better way to do it, but for me that's worked good enough. Then I have my schedule. Now this page is editable, so this part is all blank. You can just insert a table or text boxes to make your own schedule and then you can color code it whichever way you want. Or to save on ink, you can just leave it black and white. Then the student birthday page. Now I have this with lines where you're able to print it out and handwrite them in, or you can type them in and print them out the way that I did. I don't keep a lot of other student data in here because I do have a separate binder for that. Then I have school information. Now this is where I put my school improvement plan or any other documents that I need to keep from my school. Currently those are all in my classroom so this one is actually blank at the moment. Next I have my common core standards. I like to keep them right in the binder so they're really easy to reference as a lesson plan. So I do have these cheat sheets where it has all of the standards for that subject on one page. These are going to be in my store. I'm going to start by making second grade but if you teach another grade and you would be interested in these please let me know. I want to make it clear these are not included with the actual lesson planning binder. These are something separate but you could always just print the standards off the common core website or if you don't use Common Core you can use state standards and you can just print them out and insert them into your binder if you want to do that. Next I have my weekly lesson plans. Now I also included covers for math lesson plans, science lesson plans, reading lesson plans, all that. So if you don't want to put them all in the same tab, if you want to have a different tab for each subject, you have the option to do that. I'm just going to show you some of the things that are included, but I included tons of different templates. So the ones that I show you are not everything that's included. First, I have my to-do list. I like to keep a running to-do list throughout the week, and I have this both with lines where you can print it out and handwrite it in. I also have it editable, so you are able to type it and then print it out or just, just digitally take away the things as you do them. Next, I have my copies to make, and same thing here. I have it both where you can write on the lines or editable. Next, I have some of my different lesson planning templates. I have this week overview. This is just good to write down any events that are taking place that week or things you don't want to forget each day. And again, I have it with lines, and it is also editable. Then I have my day overview. Personally, my schedule changes a lot because I have specials at different times each day. So I like to write out a day overview where it's just a timeline of what I'm doing throughout the day. So this is, again, with lines or editable, but this is my must-have for every single day. Then for my actual lesson plans, the template I prefer is having all of the subjects on one page for the day. Now this is just one template that's included. Again, it is editable and I have this available with up to seven boxes, but I also have it for six, five, four, and three boxes. Next. This is what I personally use for my small group in order to plan. So I meet with three groups a day, even though I actually have four groups, I only get to three of them a day. So this is where I plan for those. This is completely editable. You can change these titles, you can change these titles, and you can change the top title. Down here is where I plan out my daily five. But again, this specific template, I have tons of different options. Down here, I have it with five boxes, I have it with four boxes, I have it with three boxes. Up here, same thing, I have it with four, I have it with three, I have it with two. So you are able to pick out the template that works for you. Next is more of a traditional lesson planning template like what you would find in a binder um, or in a lesson planning book. So this is where it has the whole week spread out. And I did print this double-sided. So for this, if you chose this template, I recommend printing your to-do list on one side and then on the other side, you have your actual templates. Now, again, with this, I included a couple different options. This is where the days are going down the side and the subjects are at the top. But I also have it the other way around. Again, to-do list uh, printed on the front. I have it where the subjects are on the side 
and then the days of the week are at the top so you can pick what works for you. The reason I like this in a binder better than like a lesson planner, for me having the spirals down the middle always got in the way of me writing, especially on like Tuesday since I'm right handed. So with this being in a binder, you're able to take out the pages, write it in there, and then put it back into the binder. Or if you're going to type it out digitally, this is available without the line, so you can just type it and then print them out. All right, next is where I have my calendar and my organizers. So this is where I keep my year long planning because this is a brand new binder for me. I don't have this filled out. But these are also editable, so if you wanted to change those out, you could. And I personally have this just on two pages. Next, I do have monthly overview. So I have these for each month. And again, these are editable, so you are able to change out the subjects if you don't teach those specific subjects. Next are my actual calendars. Now I have these again editable, so you're able to type anything in the boxes, and I have them done through 2020, but I also have editable ones where you can change out the year, and I will be updating it. So after 2020, I will continue to update it with new calendars. So currently, I just went ahead and printed out all of the calendars I need through June at the end of the school year. All right, next is grades and data. Now, again, I have a separate data binder, so I don't keep a lot in here, but I do have these different checklist forms. And again, these are editable. You can put in your student names, you can put in assignments up here, and you can even change the title. So I personally check off my students for their math and spelling homework. And I use, I was using just a very ugly template. So this is what I'm gonna start using in the morning. And then after I check them off at the end of the week, I will put it in here. But I also have just a student checklist. So if you wanna use this to check off like permission slips or any forms they have to bring in at the beginning of the year, this is a great way to do that. Next is any reference info. So in here, I like to keep things like my login so I don't forget. Obviously I took off my password so you guys couldn't see them, but this is really good just for any reference information that you have. And the last section that I personally use is just other resources. That's a place to put anything that did not fit in the other categories. So I do keep note pages back here. And again, this is editable. You can choose with lines or without. So I have several copies of those. And then this is not actually included in the binder. This is just my elementary school comment codes that I use for report cards. So if you stay tuned through the end of this video, you will be able to see everything that's included in the product if you choose to buy this. So this is where the magic happens. I've got my coffee set up over here. I do like to keep the blinds open just for some natural light. I've got my laptop set up and I like to sit on the chaise part of my couch so that I can stretch out. And then I've got my TV set up for Apple TV so I can get on Netflix. All right, so I'm going to start by showing you guys what the document looks like that I personally use when I'm lesson planning. What I recommend doing is if you purchase my binder, it is a very large file. If you're going to use the digital component, which is on PowerPoint, it's like over 200 slides. So what I recommend doing is just copying and pasting the slides that you're actually going to use on a weekly basis and creating a new document with them. So this is my document. I like to keep the binder cover on there just so that it gives it a nice start. Then I do like to keep my schedule in here just in case I ever forget. Like I said, my schedule does change sometimes day to day. So I like to have it on here just to quickly reference digitally, but I also have it printed in my binder. Then I do like to have my logins. Obviously, I took off my password so that you guys could not see them, but I like to keep it here just in case I need to get on anything online. I can very quickly look it up there in case I forget. Then I do like to keep the student birthday slide in here. That way, when I'm doing my week overview, if it's anyone's birthday that week, I go ahead and add it in there so I don't forget. My year-long planning right now is blank um, because, like I said, I just finished editing this last night, so I need to go on and add that in there. But I like to keep it so that way I can look at the month and just quickly reference what I'm doing that month so I don't forget. I also like to keep my student checklist just in case there's anything that I want to check them off for digitally. I do have that in here. 
um, or if I'm grading. If I don't feel like actually getting on my grade book, I can just record them on there. Next is my to-do list. I like to keep a weekly to-do list and I keep it digital. I normally don't print it out. I do keep a blank copy in my binder, but I mostly keep it digital. So that way when I finish something, I just delete it um, and I can very quickly add to it when I need to. I also like to keep a copies to make. So as I'm going through my lesson plans, when I come to something that I know I need to make copies of, I just quickly type it on there. And then once I actually make the copies, I delete it. Again, I I keep this mostly digital. Sometimes I do print it out just to take with me to school. Otherwise, I'll just quickly use my phone to take a picture of this. That way, when I go to school, I know what I've got to print out if I don't feel like getting out my laptop to check. Next is my week overview. This is just an kind of like a mini calendar, I guess. It's an easy way for me to jot in there. What are my specials? Um, what time are my specials? Are there any special events going on like bookmobile or testing or anything like that? Student birthdays go on here. It's just a real quick way to glance at the week. Then is my day overview. I like to type this with the times on one side and then the activity on the other side. And I'll show you guys when I actually lesson plan. But I do print this out every single day. That way I can very quickly look at what my actual plans are for the day so I don't forget anything. Then are my lesson plans. I personally like to keep one day on one page rather than keeping like all of my math plans for the entire week on one page. I like to have all the different subjects for that day all on one page. So this is where I jot down what I'm doing for math, reading, language, vocabulary, phonics, science, and social studies. My plans aren't super detailed. You guys will see when I do it. I don't put a ton of detail in there just because I know what I'm doing. I don't really need that detail detail because I'm not going to sit there and look at it when I'm actually teaching. I do put the standards in there that way my administration can see but other than that it's just a real quick jot down list of what I'm doing for that subject. Um, this is where I do my small group plans. Now I type up more detailed plans for the actual guided reading lesson. I'll show you guys that but this is what I personally use just to jot down what I'm doing quickly for each group to have it all on one page. And then down at the bottom, this is where I type what the rest of my students will be doing for the rotations. We are doing daily five, but I've had to kind of change it just because this group of kids, uh, they're not very good at working independently. So I had to kind of change how I'm doing daily five, but I'll go over that when I actually lesson plan. And that's it. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and start lesson planning and I will show you guys how I do that. All right, so the very first thing I do is type my dates under the week of just to get that all set up. And I do that on each one of the pages and all I do is just copy and paste it so I only have to type it once. The next thing that I do is get the dates and the letter day because my school will use a six day cycle, A, B, C, D, E, and F days. I get those typed in at the top of my day overview, my lesson plans, and then my small group lesson plans for each one of the days of the week. That way all I have to do is go in and type in the information. All right, so after I type up the dates on all of my lesson plan pages, I like to type up my week overview just so I can have a quick glimpse at what's going on in the week. So I typically put the date, the letter, day and then the coordinating special that I have and underneath I just put any notes for events going on or things that I don't want to forget. So obviously Monday there is no school and then on Tuesday I need to remember to stuff and send home Tuesday folders because there have been many times that I forget. Wednesday it is my double special day which means we will not have social studies and then we have tales for dogs which is where a dog comes in and the students get to read to him. Thursday I just need to remember to pack my students up before they go to media because some of them will be dismissed from there and then Friday I I need to make sure I prep next week's spelling because I do send the list home early with some of my students. So I know I've barely done anything to actually lesson plan, but I'm going to take a quick break because I'm starving. I have not eaten anything today. All I have in me is caffeine. So I'm going to go ahead, take a short break, eat, and then I will pick up with the actual lesson planning when I'm done. So now I'm ready to go ahead and actually start lesson planning. I like to do one subject at a time and plan it for the entire week. So right now I'm going through and planning math for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So as you can see here, I've gone ahead and typed it out for Tuesday. So all I did was type in a short mini lesson that I'm going to do at the very beginning. I'm going to teach them how to play this game. And then I do have the standards listed after it. 
Then my students are going to do some independent practice because I have an assistant that comes in to pull a group and I don't want them to miss any whole group instruction. So they're going to complete a math journal page and then when they finish they will play this game in partners that I taught them at the beginning. And then I have my actual whole group lesson and I just put the title from the book since the actual lesson is written out for me in the book. I don't need to actually write any more than just the title. And then I do have the standards here. Now as I do this, I do like to add to my to-do list. So right now for that lesson what I need to do is prep the number topic game boards since this is our first year using everyday mathematics I don't have these materials already prepped but it will be less for me to do in the future although I'm changing schools so I probably won't be using it anymore we'll see um, and then I also need to type up my assistant plans for math so I'm gonna go ahead and continue doing this for Wednesday Thursday and Friday so I've gone ahead and done all of my math plans for the week and I also update my day overview as I plan those out. So I've got Tuesday done, which I already showed you. I've also got Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And while I did these, I also updated my to-do list. I do still need to type up my assistant plans, but that's typically the last thing that I do. And I also have updated my copies to make page. That way I know what I need to make copies of when I go to school on Tuesday. So the next thing that I'm going to plan is science, because if you look at my schedule, I teach science every day after math. And for me, I normally just like to go in order because it makes it easier. Now we do use the next generation of science standards. That is brand new for us. So all of these science lessons are new to me. It's not something that I'm used to, but my county did develop these. So all of the lessons are already pre-made for us. They're already typed up. So all I really do is type it into my day overview and then for the actual lesson plans under science, I just type the name of the lesson with the standard. And then underneath, I'm going to put a short description of the lesson. And I'm going to go ahead and do these for all of the days this week. All right, so I am now done with planning science for the week. Because this is a 5E lesson, it does take a long time to actually complete. So this one lesson is actually going to take us all week because we don't have a ton of time for science. By the time we transition from math and then transition into social studies, it takes up a lot of our time. So we're only going to do a little bit each day. So on Tuesday, they're going to do the engage and the explore portions. On Wednesday, they're going to do the explain and elaborate portions. Thursday, they will do the evaluate. And then Friday, I've left kind of open. I know a lot of times we don't finish everything throughout the week and we end up pushing things back. So I'm leaving Friday kind of open just in case. But if we finish everything as expected, then I will let them watch the Magic School Bus episode in the rainforest. I am a huge, huge supporter of the Magic School Bus. I absolutely love them and I do think my kids learn a lot from them and I have all of the episodes on DVD. So I like to include them whenever I can. All right, slowly but surely we are getting there. I'm gonna go ahead and plan social studies next. We do not have a specific social studies curriculum. So I like to bullet out my month and figure out what would go best with each week. So I've gone ahead and bulleted out January, even though it's halfway over, <laughs> whatever. So for science, obviously we are focusing on habitats and then I tie that into reading with Akiak when we are doing the tundra habitat. And I also need to finish Akiak this week. Next week, I'm gonna focus on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. since um, MLK Day is on Monday, and I'm going to pair that in reading with Martin's Big Words for like a biography study. The week after, I know I want to do Chinese New Year since it's on January 28th, and then I'm going to pair that with Chinatown, which is one of our Hugh Mifflin stories. I also know that I want to focus on opinion writing. I'm going to have my students do an opinion piece on whether they'd rather live in the tundra, which we worked on last week, or the rainforest, which we are working on this week. So what that means is for social studies, I'm actually pretty free this week, but I do know that I want to continue with growth mindset. Now, I did complete the five growth mindset lessons I got off of TPT, but I also want to do these growth mindset videos from Class Dojo. Now, Class Dojo is free. If you have not already signed up, I definitely recommend you do it. These lessons, I mean, they're not really lessons, but these videos and activities are all free. So there's five videos. I am only teaching social studies three days this next week because no school on Monday, and then I have double special day on Wednesday, which means we won't have time for social studies. So two of the days I'm going to have to double up on videos, and then there's these four different activities activities. So what I'm going to do is just look through the videos, look through the activities, figure out what would go well together and pick out just three activities to do for the week. 
If you are looking for these on Class Dojo at the bottom under resources, just click on big ideas and then it will take you to this page and there's four different ones, growth mindset, perseverance, empathy, and gratitude. Okay, so the more I look at these growth mindset videos, the more I really like them. Here's why. With the videos, there is this discussion tab and it gives you questions to discuss with your class. So that's really, really nice. Plus, you can share it with the parents. So that's really good to keep the parents updated with what you're doing in the classroom. And with the activities, there's this nice little like slideshow that you can use. It tells you what you have to do ahead of time to prepare, and that gives all the directions with visuals. So here's what I decided to do. On Tuesday, we're gonna do the first two videos. This one's on how your brain is like a muscle. This one is on the magic of mistakes, and then we'll complete this does everyone make mistakes activity. Wednesday, we will not have social studies. Thursday, we're gonna do videos three and four. This one's on the power of yet, and this one's on the mysterious world of neurons. And we're gonna do this reflecting on our language activity so the kids get this really hard task, and you just kind of jot down how they're handling it and what words they choose to use, and then you reflect on it as a class. Friday, we'll watch the final video, which is just putting it all together, and then we're gonna do this becoming a goal setter activity. So here's where I'm at with my lesson planning. I did update my day overview. You can see now I have math, science, social studies, my read aloud, which I do every single day for about 15 minutes, recess and lunch. So for Tuesday, you can see I have math, science and social studies planned out. Here's my day overview for Wednesday. It looks about the same, except I have no social studies that day because I have double special. I've got math and science planned out and then I put no social studies due to double special. Thursday, I've got it planned out and you can see math, science, social studies again. Friday, same thing, my day overview, and then math, science, and social studies. So what I need to do now is plan out my reading. Um, so I break that into a reading, like a mini lesson that I do whole group, language, um, or you may call it grammar, vocabulary, and phonics. And that also means that I need to plan out my guided reading groups and my daily five activities. So I'm gonna take a short break and then I will catch up with you guys once I start planning for reading. So this is probably super lame of me, but I could not remember for the life of me what I already had printed out for reading and language. So I'm going back and rewatching my own YouTube video to figure out what I already have prepped. Okay, so for reading, I like to plan out the whole day. So I do the vocab, language, phonics, reading mini lessons, all that for each day before moving on to the next day rather than doing it piece by piece. So my day overview for Tuesday is done. When we get back from lunch, we do guided reading and daily five, and then I have any whole group mini lessons that I do. So here are the plans for reading. We're doing an opinion writing mini lesson. I'm gonna give them each a mega stuffed Oreo, which is basically a triple stuffed Oreo. And we're gonna go over my Oreo opinion writing anchor chart. I will show you guys that in a vlog next week. But they basically dissect, di ugh, dissect the Oreo and we go through piece by piece what they need in their opinion writing. We are not doing anything for language. I tried to fit it in, but I just could not find a way. So unfortunately, we're just not going to get to it that day. There's never enough time in a day to get to everything. Um, for vocabulary, we're going to review our vocabulary words. I did introduce these last week. I'm going to be making a video all about how I teach vocabulary, so that will be coming up and you'll get more information, but basically we're going to go through the PowerPoint and practice our signals. And then phonics, that is for one of my small groups that works with an assistant. They are working on consonant digraphs, they're going to work on SH, they're going to do the fluency sentences and then the little activity to go with it, and then if there's still time they'll do the four in a row game, but I didn't have enough room to put that in here. So this is for my guided reading and my daily five. So my students are gonna do four rotations because I have four groups, but I'm only gonna pull three of my groups. So for right now, I haven't done the guided reading lesson plans yet. I like to do that separately. But down here is where I organize my daily five. Now, I did change out word work for independent work just because I need them to get this done because I need it for a grade. They're going to do a fact and opinion, like cut and paste sort, and that's part of Rooted in Reading for January. For writing, they're going to do my monthly writing prompts, and those are in my TPT store. It's really, really easy to prep them all in a binder, so I don't actually have to do anything to get that ready. It's already set up for me. Listening to reading, they can either do read to me stories on Epic or they can get on BookFlix on the laptops. BookFlix is a subscription service. It's something that my county has. 
Uh, read to self. I am going to have them read an informational passage that's also part of Rooted in Reading, and then they're going to answer the questions to go along with it. All right, so I have finished planning reading except for my guided reading through the rest of the week, so I'm just going to quickly take you through it day by day. You can see Wednesday, we've got our guided reading and daily five after lunch, and then I've got some whole group lessons. So for reading, we are going to reread Akiak, discuss some of the comprehension questions, and complete the comprehension check for a grade. Language, they are going to do a possessive noun practice that's actually going to be done during their daily five time. And then we are also whole group going to quickly review our vocabulary words and then they are going to take a quiz. I do not have an assistant in my room on that day for phonics because it is a double special day. So for daily five that day, they're going to do word work, writing, listening, and read to self. Their word work, um, they're going to highlight the plurals on their spelling list and then complete rainbow roll. For writing, they are going to do the possessive noun writing. So they have to take the words and make them into the possessive form. If they finish, they're going to do the January prompts. Listening to reading is the same. And then for read to self, they're just going to read books from their book bins. For Thursday, you can see after lunch guided reading, they're going to take a possessive noun quiz, and then I'm going to model an opinion writing piece for them. So as you can see here for reading, I am just going to model how to write an opinion piece for the following prompt, which rainforest animal do you think is the most interesting? Then they are going to do their possessive noun quiz. They're not going to do anything for vocabulary since they took the quiz yesterday for that. And then for phonics, my small group is going to work with the digraph CH. For daily five, they're going to do word work, writing, listening, and then partner reading. So for word work, they are going to do scrabble spelling. Their writing is just going to be the January prompts that are in my binders. For listening, that's the same. And then for partner reading, they're going to read a Rainforest Animals article and then answer the questions together. So for Friday, it looks just a little bit different in the afternoon. We're going to still do guided reading, but instead of doing daily five, they're going to do catch up and pickles so that they have time to catch up on any work from the week that's not done. Then we will do our spelling test and then we will revisit the opinion writing model. So for my lesson plans, reading, basically we're going to go back through the writing piece that I did as a sample the day before, and we're going to highlight the different parts. We're going to highlight the opinion statement at the beginning, the reasons, the evidence, and then the opinion statement at the bottom. That way they can see how it almost makes a sandwich just like an Oreo cookie where their opinion statements are at the beginning and end. No language, no vocabulary because of our spelling test. And then for phonics, my small group is going to work on the digraph CK. So instead of doing daily five, my students are going to do ketchup and pickles. So independently, they're going to spend about 10 minutes studying their spelling words since after we are going to do our test. Then for ketchup, I just made a list of all the different independent activities they did throughout the week. And as I was making my lesson plans for each day, I would just come to this slide and quickly add in that activity. So that will be added to my ketchup and pickles slide when I make my daily slides. Then for pickles, it's pretty much the same every week. Um, those are the different activities that they can pick from. Okay, so once I'm done with all of my planning, I like to come back to my to-do list and color code it. So basically, the reason that I do this is because I'm not always able to get the entire to-do list done over the weekend. Sometimes I need my planning time or time after school throughout the week in order to completely finish it but I want to know what I absolutely have to have done for the next day. So what I do is color code it by the day that it's needed. So anything that's due on Monday that I have to have done is pink. Obviously I don't have school on Monday, so nothing on here is pink. Everything that I need done by Tuesday is orange. Everything I need done by Wednesday is green. Everything I need done by Thursday is blue. And then everything I need done by Friday is purple. So when I come to this to-do list to get stuff done, I'm gonna start by everything that's orange to make sure those are done first. If I have extra time, I'll then work on green followed by blue and purple so that I'm making sure that I'm prioritizing doing things that I need the soonest first. That way it's not you know the night before and I'm scrambling to get things done. Kind of similar with my copies to make. I also color code it the exact same way. What I am going to do is print out one copy of each of these. That way I make sure that I've got it when I go to the copy machine and I'm not trying to find the document on my computer and pulling it up because my computer at school tends to be really slow. So I'm going to print one copy of each of these, but then when I go to the copy machine on uh, let's see, Tuesday morning, I'm going to start by making all the copies I need for all of these in orange. Then if I've got time, I'll go ahead and make the copies for green, followed by blue and purple. 
Okay, so my butt has not moved from this couch in a ridiculous number of hours. So I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna go back to my office, I'm gonna get done all of the printing and laminating that I need to get done, and then I'm going to come back to the couch and do all the things on my to-do list that can be done digitally on my computer. So just to update you guys, I have printed and laminated all of these different game boards that we need for math. I also have done all of my copies to make. So what I did was check them off when I printed out just one copy to take to school. And then when I actually make all of the copies, you'll see that I'll just draw a line through them. And if you notice here, that number in parentheses tells me how many copies I need to make. The only thing I did not print was my week overview, my daily overviews, and my lesson plans for the week because I have a very strong feeling we are gonna be canceled on Tuesday as well. So I'm gonna to wait to print those until I find out for sure. For my to-do list, I did go ahead and type up my assistant plans. Now these templates are already in my store. I think they're a dollar, maybe a dollar fifty, maybe two dollars, somewhere around there, but they're pretty cheap. This is what I use to type up my assistant plans. And the only other things I have to do, I have to create my daily slides and I'll show you how I do that. And then I have to create two different anchor charts and then buy the mega stuffed Oreos. So I'm going to buy the Oreos tomorrow when I'm off of school. And I'm going to go ahead now and show you how I prep my daily slides. And then I will probably make my anchor charts tomorrow as well. Last thing I'm doing is editing my daily slides. I did have a lot of people ask me to put these in my TPT store, so those will be coming. All I have to do for these is just change out their homework each day. I'm also setting up my math rotation boards. These are already in my store. I have them with tons of different options here. So I have like two groups, two rotations, two groups, three rotations, four groups, three rotations, all the different possibilities I have. Plus they have different timers up at the top. And I'm going to be updating them soon to make them fully editable. Right now, you can edit all these boxes, but I'm also going to make the title editable. So if you already own them, you'll want to grab that update as soon as it's available. I will be letting you guys know. And if you don't already have them, if it's something you're interested in, if you grab them now, when I do the update for the editable titles, they are going to be going up in price by just a little bit. So if you want to keep them at the price they're at now, you want to grab them as soon as possible. I also have my cleanup slide. I'm going to be adding this to the daily rotation board. So if you want this, it will be with that pack and I'll have it with both a two minute timer and a one minute timer. And then I'll also set up my ELA rotations. And again, these are those same rotation boards. And since it will have the editable title, you will be able to use it for math or ELA, whichever one you want to use it for. And again, I have the cleanup slide. And then the last slide that I have for this week is my ketchup and pickles. This is currently a freebie in my store, but it doesn't look exactly like this. I'm going to be updating it to fit this format. So if you want that, you can grab it. It's free. And I'm also going to be adding a timer. I still got to get that ready. But when I do that update, it will have a timer for you. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys inside of the product. So if you choose to purchase this, you will know exactly what you're getting. This is the PDF document. So this has all of the pre-made pages that you can just print out and start using right away. So this is just a pre-made cover. If you don't want to customize it with your name, you could use this one. And then this is where the binder spines are as well. Then I have the pre-made cover pages for your tabs if you choose to organize it by divider. So I have class information, school information, grades and data, common core standards, state standards, reference info, calendar organizer, weekly lesson plans, math lesson plans, reading lesson plans, language lesson plans, or grammar lesson plans, writing lesson plans, ELA lesson plans, phonics lessons plans, spelling lesson plans, science lesson plans, social studies lesson plans, other resources, and then I have the login page. So if you don't want to use the editable one, you can just print this out and hand write them in. Then I have a birthdays page where you can just print that out as well and hand write them. Year long planning, August overview, and then I do have this for all of the months. Then I have all of the pre-made calendar pages. So again, currently I have this through 2020, but if you choose to purchase this lesson planner, it will include free updates for life. So I will be updating it, and there are editable calendars as well if for some reason you needed a different one. 
uh, a to-do list and again you can just print this off and I have two different versions one that says week of and another one that just says date if you want to just use a daily to-do list same thing for copies to make and then I have a pre-made notes page pre-made date overview and I have a couple of different headers for that I have date and then the date and letter day if your school uses a letter day cycle and then we have the week overview and then I have the two page spread with the days down the side and the two weeks or sorry the week long spread with the days at the top then I have pre-made lesson plan pages so this has Monday through Friday this has different subjects and again I have different headings available for those this is four groups with daily five three groups with daily five or two groups with daily five then I have four groups with just four stations three groups with four stations and two groups with four stations now I have four groups with three stations, three groups with three stations, and two groups with three stations. Then I have pre-made student checklist or grades, math grades, reading grades, language grades, grammar grades, word work grades, writing grades, ELA grades, spelling grades, science grades, social studies grades, and that's the end of that document. Now I'm going to show you guys inside of the editable PowerPoint document that comes with it as well. I know people are going to ask me about these fonts. These are fonts from Amy Grosbeck. They are not free fonts. You would have to purchase them. However, you can use any font you want, but if you want your fonts to match the same ones I used, this font right here is AG 180 days, and this one is AG running late is my cardio. So this is a lesson planning binder cover where you can edit your name, and then and this is the editable cover title for the different sections or if you wanted to create your own title page as well you could use this one for that then I have the editable schedule so you can either insert a table or you can insert text boxes to create that editable logins editable birthdays editable year-long planning an editable student checklist and I also have that for all of the different grades as well Plus, I have one with just a blank title here where you can edit the text and make it for anything you need. Then I have the editable month overviews for the different subjects. And I also included a fully editable version of this. So if you wanted to change the title and change the titles of the boxes, you're able to do that. Then I have the editable to-do list, editable copies to make, editable notes, editable day overview, and then I have the editable spreads where it has one week on just the two pages. So this is with the days going down the side, and this is with the days going across the top. Then I have the editable week overview, editable lesson plans for Monday through Friday, editable subject lesson plans. And then all of these group pages with the different daily five options at the bottom are all editable. Same thing with the stations. And I've got tons of these. As you guys can see, I included as many different options as possible. Then this is an option for you if you want to edit the different subjects down the side. So I have it available with seven, six, five, four, and three. Then I have it where these are completely editable. So if this is just a different format that would work better for you, you're able to use this. So again, I have it with all the different options. So you can pick and choose what's going to work best for your classroom. Same thing here, this one you can edit the title as well. So if you don't want it to say lesson plans and you want to be more specific and tell the specific subject, you're able to do that for these as well. Ah, sorry, I know there's like a ton of pages. Um, and then this final slide, this is where you are able to create any form that you could possibly need. So you can edit the title and then anything you want down at the bottom, you can add text boxes, you can add shapes, anything that you need you could use this slide for. If you watched until the end of this video and you're still hanging in there with me, kudos to you because I know these videos are super, super long and I appreciate everyone who watches them all the way through. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and it was helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe to me so you don't miss any future videos. Leave a comment down below if you enjoyed this video. I do read all of them. If you have any questions, put it down there. I promise I will get back to you. If you are interested in my lesson plan binder, it is in my TPT store. The link to it is down in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I will see you guys in my next video video.